Today, we're gonna to create a solar data visualization using some creative coding, a few digital fabrication tools, and an Arduino microcontroller. The cool thing about this project is that I also created a website that allows you to create your own solar visualizations too. I decided to turn my solar visualization into a clock. In my visualization, each ring represents one hour of the day. The current hour lights up. The base is a calendar, which helps you determine how much sunlight hits a specific location on the planet at any given time of the year. So here's how it works. It's currently about three o'clock in early December here in Stockton, New Jersey. So here's December. And if we go 15 rings down, that's how much solar radiation is beating down at this location at this exact time. Now each visualization is gonna look differently depending on where you are in the world. We're gonna take a look at a couple of different places in just a little bit. But first I wanna show you where I live because that's what this model is based off of. This project began with just a few lines of code. One evening I was experimenting with a Python library called PySolar. The library simulates the irradiation of any point on earth by the sun. And in their documentation, they've got some code for you to try out. So I downloaded some libraries, I opened up an editor and I ran the code. And when I ran the code, it spit out a number. It provided me with the amount of irradiation at that exact time in that specific geolocation. And with a little bit more code, I was able to get the irradiation data for every hour of every day throughout the year in my own town. But once you have those numbers, they're just numbers. And so you need to find a way to visualize them. And so to do that, I wrote some JavaScript to turn those numbers into shapes. I programmed it so that each model has 24 rings, one ring for each hour of the day. Each ring contains 365 data points one point for each day in the year. The higher the number, the further each point is away from the center. And then I took that whole thing and I put it in a web app that generates shapes for any given location so that anybody can create their own solar data visualizations. I have the website linked in the description below, so please go check it out. challenge anybody watching this video to go and make your own solar data visualizations. They could be any size, made out of any material. So go ahead, be creative. I'd love to see what you can come up with. But now that I have a way to generate shapes, I need to cut them out on my Glowforge. The Glowforge is arguably my favorite rapid prototyping tool. This is my favorite part. This is the part where I get to make data tangible. That is something I could hold in my hand.
So this looks really good. And you can clearly see the summer months versus the winter months. But now, of course, I wanted to see a few other solar models from around the world. So I used my laser cutter to cut models for New York City, Siberia, Russia, Quito, Ecuador, Sydney, Australia, Cairo, Egypt, the Munson Scott South Pole Station in Antarctica, and a few others. Let's take a look at New York City, since New York City is really close to New Jersey. The models look almost identical, although you can spot some slight differences. Weirdly enough, Rome, Italy is on the same latitude line. And so this model also looks very similar to New Jersey, even though it's a little bit warmer, but that has more to do with the ocean current than anything else. So let's look at some of the extremes now. So the first extreme we'll look at is Siberia, Russia. So the first thing that you might notice is that there's not a lot of solar irradiation during the winter months. Also, the model's a lot smaller. You may also notice that the model is smoother as well. It's not like the other three. The other three have these ridges. And these ridges are here because New York, Rome, and New Jersey observe daylight savings time. Siberia does not, so you get more of a natural kind of shape. That's a lot like our next model, which is Quito, Ecuador. Quito, Ecuador is right on the equator. It gets a ton of sunlight, and you can see from this model, it goes from darkness to like full blast daylight and then darkness again. Next up, we've got Sydney, Australia. What I liked about this model, it looks almost the exact opposite of New Jersey. Well, because it's in the Southern Hemisphere. Their summers are our winters and vice versa. Thought that was so cool. And now let's take a look at Cairo, Egypt. This one looks a lot like Quito, Ecuador. And then finally, my favorite, this one is the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station in Antarctica, right? This is the extreme of the extreme. According to this model, it's completely dark during the entire month of June, all 24 hours. On the other hand, it's completely light during the month of January, all 24 hours. I actually almost didn't believe it, so I had to go online and you can actually see a live webcam of this station. I'll put the link in the description below. Now I have a couple of other models. I have China, and Iceland, but you can try them out for yourselves. I think the next thing I wanna do in this video is I wanna transition now to uh, the bigger model. So to make the bigger model, I had to go buy some wood and we'll start by making the discs. Once I cut all the shapes, I laid them out. And then I thought it'd be extra fancy by 3D printing this jig so that I could glue all the pieces together and have them all perfectly aligned. I even tested to make sure that the wood glue wouldn't adhere the wooden pieces to the jig. So I glued everything up one piece at a time and I let the glue dry. But somehow the jig got stuck. And no matter what I did, I couldn't remove it. So I had to bust the whole thing apart, clean it all up, 
and then try to put it back together again without using the jig. And it didn't come out perfect, but it's good enough. Now for the base, I wanted to use this certified redwood burl that came from a forest fire. And I wanted to use it because it looks like the sun. And I know I'm really pushing that metaphor, but I think it came out all right. For the calendar base, I had some stainless steel and some brass cut. I used a service called Senka Sen. They're amazing. But I couldn't decide whether I wanted to use brass or whether I wanted to use stainless steel. So I asked the internet and the internet decided that brass was the way to go. So I laser engraved all of the months onto the brass disc using my Glowforge and then I applied some sealer on it so it wouldn't varnish. So now let's move on to the electronics. I simply used a timing circuit and an Arduino to control the two LED strips inside of the clock. The coding to make the LEDs light up with the current time was pretty simple. I'll link all the code that I used for this project in the description below. But there's one more piece that I never quite finished. It's a solar visualization. It needs to be powered by the sun. But I got sidetracked by another project, never quite finished it. But hopefully I'll get that solar panel hooked up really soon. All in all, this was a really fun project to work on. It was definitely a nice reprieve from working solely on client work. I think it's important to work on side projects to keep you motivated. Well, I think that's all I got for this one. I'm really excited to see any of your solar visualizations that you make. Please post them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.